Oh, happy hump day. When you think of hump day, when you think of Wednesday, I hope you go, oh my gosh, I got to sit in and talk to my girl Juju. Let's see what crazy shit's flying out of her mouth today. Well, buckle up, buttercup. Let's get into it. Hello, world. Come inside the Dear Juju podcast. How's it going? How's your week? Oh, mine is great. Thanks for asking. You know, our neighbors were infested with fleas. So that was another fun thing. I'm like, can we get lice next? Like, can it rain frogs? What other biblical plague is going to hit our house? Thank God that this wasn't us and it was our neighbor. So literally when my next door neighbor told me like, hey, there's a flea infestation. We think it's from the wild animals. I said, great. Called my exterminator right away. And I was like, hi, can you get over here right now? They bombed the whole house. They sprayed the perimeter. And then I asked my neighbor, like, hey, do you want me to spray your yard? She was like, no, I have a garden. I don't really want all that toxic stuff. No. This is where my California-ness goes out the window. Because I'm like, what you talking about, girl? Literally, your husband is bitten up all over his tummy, all over his arms, And you don't want that to, I mean, I get it. I'm doing a detox spray. Like I love non-toxic stuff as well, but hunty, when it comes to fleas, worms, bugs, creepy crawlies, da, 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 uh, uh, uh. I'm a little squeamish about all that. I will call the exterminator and he'll be spraying like how I made my husband spray on our honeymoon, honey, all over the vicinity. (laughs) Also in other exciting news this week, I sneezed and then I peed a little too much for my liking. Now, sometimes, you know, when you sneeze, you pee just a little bit, but this time it was a gush. And then, you know, I thought to myself, like when you go and you fill things out and you have to check your box of like under 18, 18 to 25, 25 to 35, it should basically just be two boxes. Are you peeing too much when you sneeze or you're not? And that's all I need to find out if we're going to be friends or not. Hey, how are you? Oh my God, I like you. I'm feeling you. Do you pee a little too much when you sneeze? Because Then you and I got stuff in common. You probably have kids. You're probably of a certain age. And I don't know about you, but I have to wear a little pad in my panties to make sure that if for some reason the pollen gets in, I don't make a little pee-pee in my pants. Oh, Lord. It's just like, you know, getting older is so funny because you have this delusion of things. Another delusion that I have, and tell me if you're with me. So we're going to Cancun for my mom's 70th birthday. I am so excited. My whole family is going. My brother, my sister, my mom, my stepdad, all my nieces, all my nephews on my side. My whole immediate family is going to Cancun. As my son says, because he's in Spanish immersion, Cancun. He is cracking me up. He is a little blonde boy that's like, mom, I'm so excited for Mexico. I'm like, yes, Mexico. And now his Spanish is getting so good. He's like, mama, mama, ven acá. I'm like, boy, you are going to get it popping when you're older. You know, your name's Rocco. I made you speak Spanish. You should be able to pull, in my opinion. And I want him to know that this is the kind of mother that he has. I set him up for slaying success if he wants to slay the ladies, the guys, whoever he's attracted to. I'm pretty sure it's the ladies because he got a boner when we were at CVS at the Depends model. (laughs) And this was last year. I digress. So we're all going to Cancun. I'm six weeks out from this vacation. And my delusional ass just doesn't believe that I have a 41-year-old gut, metabolism, post-baby body, none of that, okay? I'm like, yeah, I can lose 20 pounds in six weeks. No problem. (laughs) Listen, I would be lucky if this came off in six months, let alone six weeks. But you know, my delusional brain is just walking around going, you can do this, sweetheart. Then I'll be naked and actually like oddly catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror and go, oh my God, you're so delusional, Juge. You've got so much work to do. (laughs) What the work should really be is booking a surgeon. That should be 
<laughs> the real work. No, no, no. I'm going to I'm gonna work it off. I'm going to eat really clean. I'm going to eat for my microbiome. I'm going to work out at Orange Theory and lift weights, and I'll do all that I can. Let's see how far I've got. So far, actually, I've already lost three. That was probably just a big, you know, a big number two that I took. Speaking of, I learned something really interesting. Are you guys listening to the School of Greatness? I love that podcast. It's He has really interesting people on his show. I watch it on YouTube and they speak about interesting things. And I like to learn while I'm doing my makeup or washing the dishes or things like that. The last one I listened to, his name is Will Bullsquicks. I'm probably just ripping that apart. Anyways, one of the most interesting things that he said, you know, gut microbiome, eat a diverse plant, herbs, you know, vegetable diet that will help feed and make you feel satiated, work out, right? All 95% of serotonin is in our gut. These are kind of things that like if you're interested in the health space, you kind of know. One of the things that I had no idea is that we have 12 nerves in our brain. And this is like sight, breathing, moving, all these kind of nerves. But there is one nerve. I think it's called the vagus nerve that goes down into your gut. And it like checks out the scene down there. Now, one of the ways to stimulate this nerve is by breathing. They took a study of people that were chronically constipated and they did this breathing, not box breathing, but kind of where it's four seconds in your nose and then six seconds out through like pursed lips for 10 minutes and their pooping improved by like 70 something percent. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. So if I want to get <laughs> a slimmer stomach and basically get all this poop out of my intestines. All I got to do is breathe. Next time you want to take a deuce, you know, just just breathe it out, bitch. Okay. All right. Now it's time to go inside, find your inner domestic goddess and let's let her out, honey. Okay. Cooking at my favorite restaurant, Tironi. And one of my favorite things is involtini melanzane. What is that? Oh, honey, it is damn near eggplant rolls, okay? Filled with cream. And you know how much I love to be filled with cream. Basically, you cut an eggplant. Now, you know, eggplant, you always got to sweat it with salt. She's a little hydrated. The best thing to do is after you cut it, lay it on like a cookie cooling sheet, salt it, let it sweat out the excess moisture. Anytime you cook eggplant, that is a fabulous thing to do. That way, it won't leave whatever you're making watery. And basically, you cut it in thin slices, you sweat it, you put this beautiful mixture of like ricotta and herbs, and then you roll it, and then you bake it. It's super easy. So you know, I'm trying to lose weight, right? But you know, my um, my palate just wants that pasta sauce. So this is a good way to kind of trick your brain into thinking that you're having a big Italian meal without having the carbs of the pasta. Now, after it's done being baked, you can pull it out, put a little more tomato sauce on top, sprinkle it with a little ricotta salata, which is hard ricotta. <laughs> Give me the soft and the hard, honey, I'll take a boat. Then you flash bake it for a little while, pull it out, drizzle it with some olive oil, put some finishing herbs of basil on there, Involtini del melanzane. Have your brain be thinking that you have pasta while your thighs are shrinking. Okay? So that's what I'm making this week. Cocktails. Now, I am from the South. And what do we love in the South, honey? Sweet tea. Am I right? You want your tea to be as sweet as you are. Pim's cups are the bomb. It feels to me like the Brits drink it when they're playing tennis and things like that. It tastes almost like a sweet tea to me. The best Pim's cup that I've ever had was at Taroni and they gave me the recipe. These recipes that I have here in my hand were made by one of the best bartenders and mixologists I have ever met. One ounce of gin, one ounce of Pim's, half ounce simple syrup, half ounce lemon juice, right? I mean, to me, that's a sweet tea, but most Pim's cups don't actually have gin and then they become a little too sweet, a little too weak. This is a Pim's cup, you know what I mean? Easy, Pim's, gin, half and half, one, one, half, half. And this is what I love to drink in the summertime. If you haven't had a Pim's cup, order you some Pim's. I'm sure you have gin in your bar and give it a try. You're going to say, oh my God, this is crack-a-lackin'.
Thank you, Juju. Oh, you're welcome. Last but not least, decor. Now, I don't know if you can see, this is my bar behind me that I have a credenza because I have a lot of bar things. But also next to this on the side of camera, I also have a bar cart. This bar cart actually got secondhand from a friend. She was like, hey, do you want my Target bar cart? I said, yeah, I'll DIY that mofo. And so polished it up, put a little rub and buff on there. You guys, the gold rub and buff is to die for. It is so much fun. I just want to buff everything. I'd buff my nipples if I could. But now I want to move this to the outside because I don't know if you remember last week, I'm redoing and revamping my only outside area. And I'm like, the outside area needs a bar cart. I need to go out there and go, oh, what are we pouring? What are we drinking? What are we serving? And I'm looking for a new bar cart for in here. Oh, Cherish and other places, Etsy and eBay. It's called an Italian Hollywood Regency Gilt Tassel Metal Bar Cart. And if Dear Juju had and produced a bar cart, this would be my bar cart. It's got tassels, it's got gold, it's got glass. Something about tassels says theater, Hollywood, I think titty tassels, you know what I mean? Do you love a bar cart? Do you have a bar cart? Do you need a bar cart? You know, look around, okay? Where could a bar cart go in your room? I actually like to roll the cart. That's something that feels very like cigars, cigarettes. It's such a good time. So find a little nook or cranny in your space and get you a bar cart. Okay, let's get it together. Let me know which one you're going to get. All right, and now it's time for some Q&A with some TNA. Okay. Dear Juju, love your content and positive energy. Oh my God, thank you so much. You're a strong source of vitamin glee. Oh, I love I might, I might take that girl. What are your thoughts on imposter syndrome? I was laid off in March and although I'm twerking the booty over countless applications, it's been difficult job market ever since COVID. At first, I had an ain't no thing kind of attitude, but now your girl's going through it and I could use some of your sage advice. Warm wishes, Ingrid. Just keep going. Here's my sage advice. You can pause and you can take a break if mentally you're getting exhausted, but do not stop. Do not quit, okay? Because when you quit, you know that outcome. You know what's gonna happen at that door. But if you keep going, you never know that that next thing that you put out could be the one that hits, right? And I'm talking about a resume, I'm talking about a video, I'm talking about a line or a product, whatever it is. So it sounds like you're looking for a job. It's easy to get discouraged, right? When you're trying and trying and trying and nothing's happening. Sometimes when you stop trying, that's when it happens. So my next advice would be go enjoy your life. Take a breath. Go maybe book a trip. Make a fun play date with a friend. Like do something fun that kind of resurges your energy. Gives you those good vibes because that's what it can attract. And then my third piece of advice was would be to make sure that everyone knows that you're looking for a job. Start humble. Start somewhere. When I was getting into choreographing, I would do things for free because I would be feeling the way it felt to be on set. And I just wanted to be on set. I wanted to be close to it. So whatever you're doing or try to do, make sure everybody knows that you're looking for a job. Make sure everybody knows that you're willing to work. Put it out there on social media. Put it out there with your friends. It's like keep putting out while letting go. It's a weird, like, that's a funny dance motion. It's definitely a tug of war, honey, but don't let the war be in your brain. You just keep going. And the attitude, you really have a choice. You have a choice to choose getting discouraged or you have a choice to choose the positiveness. So even if you got to fake it some days, just keep going. You're doing great. Keep popping that booty on those applications and just keep going. Oh yeah, honey. And then every time you say it, send a little mantra. Every time you send something out or send something and say, you know what, if this is for me, let it be. And if not, send the one that's for me to me. Thank you. You know, have a good time. So yeah, just keep twerking that booty until it pops. Dear Juju, at what stage in your life did you decide just to be you and be fabulous? Now, I peaked at eight. Okay, that's when I got my first standing ovation. That's when I got my agent for my commercial. I was winning all my dance competitions. At eight, I was popping. I had so much confidence. I just knew who I was and what I wanted to do. Seriously, truly. Then life started to dip a bit. And I went through a lot of things that humbled me and that taught me a lot. 
one of the things as an adult was I was in these relationships where people were subtly like putting me down. One of my biggest relationships was a friendship and I let that friendship, I let it. It's not their fault. It's my fault. I let them kind of dim my light a little bit. They would always be saying these backhanded comments and I would just always let it slide and I would never say, hey, you can't say that to me. That's really offensive or whatever it may be. So I allowed it. There's no blame on their side. But I did eventually let that friendship go. And that ended up being one of the biggest blocks of my life. Because when that friendship left, I didn't realize how much I, perspective-wise, was letting that kind of control me and dictate me. It was this weird thing that I had. I let it go and then I literally felt like I just started to lift. That's why like who you keep around you is so important for your mental health and for your success. I had a resurgence and all the fabulousness that I've always known that's always been there kind of started to come back because I allowed myself to act on it. I allowed myself to put myself out there in the way that I knew I was. And it was so funny because when I started Dear Juju, I was also in a different romantic relationship too. That was also toxic and left. And then I just started to rise. And in my first Dear Juju episode, I didn't even talk. Okay, I was literally, I felt like a baby that um, was just sat up for the first time. Then I started to crawl. Then I started to talk more. Then I started to dance. And then finally I was naked in a clam. You know what I mean? Um, it didn't take long to get there. But you really, when you decide that you want to be your most fabulous self, that decision also comes with action. And it's okay. You don't even have to speak. It doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be brilliant, but you just got to do it. And the crazy thing is, is that when my sister saw that first episode, it was the sidecar, by the way, that's on YouTube. My sister said, oh my God, there she is. I see her. I see her like deep in there. And then more I started doing it, the more comfortable I became with letting out my most fabulous self. So I would say it was 2019 after I had my first child, because when you have a kid as well, being a mother, you realize what a superhuman you are. So having my first kid, I felt so grounded in who I was. I felt so confident I had let go of those toxic relationships. I had done inner work. I had pulled in the love of my life. I had had my first child and I thought, it's time. It is time. This baby that I have also had called Dear Juju inside my brain and my belly, I'm about to birth that bitch. So yeah, actually, when did I decide in 2019? Thank you very much. I think it was like November. How old was I? I was like 34, you know? So, but it doesn't matter if you're 34, 44, 54, 64. Once you decide, I want you to act on it. Don't forget that deciding also comes with action. It means dressing how you want. It means acting how you want. It means dating who you want. It means letting go of that friendship that you know no longer serves you. You know what I mean? So, honey, that decision comes with positives and negatives, okay? It's the yin and the yang. Dear Juju, what's the most extreme hidden talent that you have? Oh, well, this is a fun one. I'm not going to lie. Okay, my most extreme hidden talent is I can get ready in the car while driving somewhere. I know, I know it's not safe, but honey, see these lashes, see these lashes, honey, I can, I can pop them on at a stoplight, okay? I can do my hair while driving. I can beat this mug while I'm honking the horn. This has been a talent of mine for a really long time. And this is because I'm usually always running late. I can listen to music, talk on the phone, do my makeup, do my hair, all in the 20 minutes it took me to get there while driving. I know. Now, I can't wait for these driveless cars to come because I'm like, yes, can you come so I can beat my, you know what I mean? That's 30 minutes of what? Of wasted time. And I'm packing it in so hard these days. Kids, business, show, uh, friendship, sex life with my husband. You guys had no idea the depths of my talent, but that's it. Oh, I got one more thing to tell you. You know, I see on the internets a lot of fun spiritual things get sent my way because of the algorithms, right? So 
One of the things that was sent to me that I actually thought was really interesting is this meditation technique. And I tried it this morning. So this is what you do, okay? When you're in a state of theta, alpha, I forget, when you're really relaxed and you do some breathing, close your eyes and imagine a really long corridor or really long hallway. And at the end of the hallway, there's a door. So you're walking, maybe you're dancing, maybe you're sauntering, maybe you're skipping down the hallway and you open the door. And when you open the door, there's your future self. Have you ever heard that phrase, maybe you want what you want because your future self is calling you to want it, right? And there's your future self having, embodying, and being everything that you are wanting right now in this realm, right? We're talking quantum physics, okay? So what you do is you open the door and you're placed into the scene of your future self. Oh, look at you. You look great. You look happy. You look amazing. You're super healthy. And that's what I did. This is what I did this morning. I opened the door and I was on set of Dear Juju. And let me tell you, the headdress that I was wearing, bitch, in my imagination nation, it was major. It was yellow. It was silver. It was beautiful. And I looked so good. My tits, you guys, <laughs> they looked so good. And I literally was like, hey, girl. And she gave me a big hug. And she's like, hi. Is this hilarious? And this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to talk, go talk to your future self. And uh, my future self told their hair and makeup team, can you guys give me a second? And I spoke to me of where I was right now. And I hugged her so tight. And we held hands. We took each other's arms. I said, hey, what do you want to say to me? How did you get here? What did you do? And this is my first time doing it. And the future self looked at me and just said, just keep doing it. And I was like, that's it? And sometimes, you know, you have to try. I only had a little bit of time before I had to get the kids ready for school. Sometimes it also says, like, keep going because your brain is trying to figure out and trying to do it. And you want to get into your higher self, not your, you know, your brain doesn't know. Your brain doesn't know how it's going to get from here to there, but your higher self does. So really try to keep going and flushing it out. And then what you're supposed to do is replay it and say, okay, thank you. I will walk away, close the door, go back through the corridor, and then plant yourself back to where you are. It's some kind of technique from somebody or other maybe you guys know so try that whenever you're like waking up and you're like oh I have a few minutes like maybe it's a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning where you can sleep in just when you're coming out of that rest keep your eyes closed and try it it's such a fun exercise I'm gonna do it again tomorrow and I'm gonna try to keep doing it daily to see flush out what my future self really has to say I'm not sure but I think my future self's also said to get a tit job. Those titties looked major and I had abs. And it's good to and fun to imagine yourself looking good, being healthy, being successful, and merging the two worlds, okay? So try that little meditation nation technique. Try a PIMS cup. What about a bar cart? Look around, can you squeeze one in somewhere? You know, and let me know if you also pee your pants a little too much for your liking when you sneeze. Don't forget, you're a star. You know this. I love you. And when you think of hump day, honey, think of dear Juju. And I'm out. Mwah.